Welcome back to Keith's Hot Takes, and I have uh, two special guests on the line with me today. Uh, I have my guy Ruff from Time Out Sports. Ruff, how you doing today, bro? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good, bro. And now I'm guy Lamarck from J Wall Sports. How you doing today, bro? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. About first is should Patrick Beverly uh, be suspended uh, for what he did to Chris Paul? So. Let me share my screen and I'm going to pull up uh, what he did to Chris Paul. So if you missed it, you can uh, see what he did. So here we go. Oh, what? I mean, that's as unsportsmanlike as it gets. Patrick Beverly losing control. He said something. Paul said something to him and he reacted inappropriately. He's been chirping all series long. That's right. That's not the time to react that way. Right. All right, so as you see, the game is out of hand. Chris Paul is just cooking the Clippers. Uh, he, he looks at Pat Bev, uh, and I don't know, I guess Pat Bev, he's mad he's getting the brakes beat off of him, and then he pushes Chris Paul. And uh, as we found out Saturday, he got suspended for one game, and we're going to switch up the topic, and we're going to say, is one game enough for Patrick Beverly? I personally think he should be suspended for three to five games. I don't think one game is enough. I feel like for him to, you know, be a poor sport, the game is out of hand. So what? Chris Paul didn't say nothing to you. He just looked at you and for you to push him, I just feel like that was just unnecessary and uncalled for. So, yeah. What do you guys think? Um, I oh. think, I think that, I think that the one game suspension was the correct decision for the NBA to make when you go back and you look at, you know, previous incidents of this kind of nature with, you know, other players, you know, it was a one game suspension. I don't think, you know, just because it was a playoff game, they should increase it to three or three to five games, even though it was excessive and it wasn't needed. But I think, I think that one game suspension, you know, it was on par with the, the league what they've been doing for the entire season. There we go. Ruff, how about you, bro? For me, I personally felt like he should have got three to five games as well. I think when you talk about pushing somebody in the back that is not even facing you, one, it's a weak move. Two, it's a move that could jeopardize his health. Chris Paul could have severely got hurt. He could have hurt his shoulder, his wrist even further. He just could have got hurt and it could have altered the Suns' chances to win the title. So when you do something like that, I think that the the um, consequences of those actions need to be more severe than they were. I do not agree with one game because I think by doing that, that sets a precedence that, you know, it'll be all right. You're just going to get one game if you do something like that. So I disagree with that decision by the league to suspend Patrick Beverly just one game. And like like you were saying, I was scared that, you know, Chris Paul could hurt his back or slip the disc in his back or something like that. And we know he's been dealing with that wrist injury. Uh, so him falling on that, on that wrist, he could have broke it or something uh, real bad, like you said. So thankfully he got up. And uh, I was hoping his teammates would have done something, especially uh, Frank Kaminsky, because uh, I can't tell you the last time he played, that was his opportunity to, you know, take out a little frustration on Pat Bev. And as soon as he started pushing, you know, as soon as he saw he was about to push him, he could have hit him with a nice uppercut, three-piece or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> something. I mean, you ain't been playing, so it ain't like they need you or anything. Uh, so, I mean, that was his time to take his frustration out on little Pat Bev. So, I understand why the other guys who are, you know, playing and a part of the team, the rotation in the series didn't do anything. But Frank Kaminsky, you, for you just to give him that little weak little push after he didn't put the man on the floor. I mean, like, come on, you could have did something before he even tried to severely hurt Chris Paul and then that phony apology he put on Twitter, he could have saved that. So, do you guys two think? Two last things. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, two last things on that situation. Pat Brev is a guy that talks a lot of trash. So, if you're going to, you know, do that, you got to be willing to take it back. So, I, I don't understand. Why, why are you now wanting to fight? Just like when Chris Paul <laughs> got fouled in that game by you and he hit the floor for hard, you mocked him and acted as if he was flopping. That's trash talk. So then when it comes to, in your direction, you have to be, you know, willing to receive it. 
Yeah. And the second thing, when we talk about Kaminsky, I agree that he got to do more than that. You got to you got to back your teammate, man. But now looking at it, we know what happened last night in oh, game yeah, one yeah. with Sarge. Yeah. So he now may end up in the rotation. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You're talking about uh, Sarge. Uh, he uh, unfortunately tore his ACL in his right knee, uh, so he'll be out for the rest of the playoffs. So now Frank Kaminsky will probably be the backup center that comes off the bench, but uh, he shouldn't even be eligible for this series if he had did what he was supposed <laughs> to do. To <laughs> All right, hey, you got to think about it. If that was Jay Crowder instead of Frank Kaminsky, oh, Jay man. Crowder wouldn't be playing right now because we know that's not going down with Jay Crowder. I, sure. that, that's sort of the precedent you have to have in that situation if you're Frank Kaminsky like you can't watch him walk up to your teammate no and way. then push him and then you know you just sitting over there taking pictures like oh dang it's about to go down like no you you so you supposed to stop you supposed to stop that before it even get there like especially like when you said like he could have got injured that's that's like protecting your teammate to the utmost because we know how valuable Chris Paul is going to be for the Suns team to even win the finals. For sure. And like Ruff was saying, you know, Pat Bev, he can dish it out, but don't seem like he can take it, you know, because uh, like he was talking about in game two when uh, Chris Paul could have, I thought he had hurt his tailbone when he had fell hard. And then Pat Bev is just, you know, doing all that. And uh, that was right. a, bad look that's why I think he should have got more games because of that situation I thought that was a little dirty even though he was fighting over a screen I, so uh we're gonna let you lead off on this next one Ruff who do you think is gonna be the x factor in this final series between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Phoenix Suns so I have an x factor for well I really have two x factors for the Suns and I have one for the Bucks okay. when you talk yes. about the Milwaukee Bucks for me I believe that Pat Connaughton has to play well in order for the Bucks to be successful. He's going to need to be able to come in, play defense, and make shots. Not one or the other. He's going to, need to, he's going to have to be able to do both of those things and help th that team win. He needs to give them energy plays, you know, 50-50 balls. He has to go get them. That's what Pat Conson is going to have to do because you're, you're already behind the eight ball when you talk about Dante DiVincenzo being out. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's a key loss for them right now in this series. So they need Pat Connaughton to definitely step it up. And then when I talk about the Phoenix Suns, I look at Cameron Johnson, who is a guy that's able to make the three and who is starting right. to play a little bit better defense. He, he fights and, you know, gives effort on defense now. So you need Cameron Johnson to do some things for you positive and also Cameron Payne. Cameron Payne playing well would, would take a little bit of the burden off of Chris Paul and allow him to be able to get a few minutes of rest and, and the team not feel like that, you know, they're losing anything as far as their playmaking and their scoring ability. So those are the three players for the two teams that I think really need to be um, on their A game for the two respective teams. All right, Lamar, how about for you, bro? Yeah, I, I did the same thing. I have uh, one for the Bucks and one for the Suns, but I went in a bit, I went in a different direction for the Bucks. I said it's got to be Drew Holiday because it was very evident in the last series against the Hawks when Giannis went down that this team, even before Giannis went down, this team plays a whole nother level of basketball when Drew Holiday is playing like we know Drew Holiday can play. My only thing with him is it it he I don't think he's integrated into this offense correctly to put that kind of impact on the team, which is why we see some games he's scoring a lot and some games he's, you know, like last night where he wasn't really effective. For the Suns, I said it's got to be DeAndre Ayton because DeAndre Ayton, he had, he almost, he almost had a 2020 game last night with 20 points and he had 20 points and 19 rebounds last night. And I think he has to, you know, be, he has to rebound on that level, especially with uh, Sarge out the game. And he's going to have to play defensive. He's going to have to play very well defensively with Sarge out because they're going to be, you know, short a big man. And Frank Kaminsky, he, I don't think he'll be the rim protector that DeAndre Ayton can't be or that uh, Sarge, can, Sarge was. 
Yeah, uh, I agree with you. Uh, Aiden, he's been a monster. Uh, last night he had 22 and 19 rebounds. That's just grown man, especially for that being his first finals game. He was just massive last night. Uh, for me, I said the X Factor would be both teams' backcourts. And as we see last night, the Suns' backcourt outscored the um, Bucks' backcourt 57 to 39. Uh, Middleton played great last night, but Holiday, he just uh, didn't have it last night. But uh, as we see, Chris Paul had a big game, Ed and Devin Booker. So I think uh, the X factor for this series is going to be, like you said, Drew Holiday. And I was surprised he struggled last night because the last couple games without Giannis, he's been rolling. He was playing well. And I, I thought this was, you know, he was going to continue that once Giannis came back. But for whatever reason, he just didn't have it last night. So they're definitely going to need him to step up if uh, they want this series to continue past uh, next Saturday. So, yeah. I definitely agree with you yeah. that um, the backcourts are important. I, I went with backups because I, you know, looked at them as X factors. I didn't really say, okay, you know, because I feel like we know that Drew Holiday, uh, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and uh, Chris Middleton are all – people that are going to have to play well. I mean, I don't necessarily look at them as X factor because they need to play well um, for those teams to win. But, you know, you, you all definitely made good points. Um, Drew Holiday, for whatever reason, is just not been the same player consistently with Giannis on the court. Sure. He's not as aggr aggressive. Um, and Chris Middleton, you talked about playing well. He played well in the second half. But if oh, you yeah, watch the first half, half, he was pedestrian. So, yeah, they need all three of those big three members to come out in game two and, and, and go to work. And, and one thing I must say, the defensive intensity was was lackluster. Drew Holiday is one of the best defensive players in the league. And he, not only did he not give you good offensive production, but his defense was not good last night. Mm -hmm. The Suns got whatever they wanted. And they kept putting so, – Brooke Lopez in the pick and roll, and it was like a rotisserie chicken getting cooked. <laughs> Even beyond that, when I watched Drew Holiday own somebody, he they still were getting quality shots. So Drew Holiday is capable of being elite. He's going to have to take his defensive prowess up. Yeah, I definitely think he's going to have to ramp up his intensity. You can't let Chris Paul go for 32. You can't let Devin Booker go for 27. So uh, they're definitely going to have to ramp it up on defense and uh, – I think they're going to have to turn this into kind of like a football game, you know, kind of rough up the Suns, you know, make it a little physical. Uh, I think that'd be their best chance of, you know, competing in this series. Absolutely. And uh, like you said, yeah. the uh, bench play, I think it's going to be huge. Uh, both teams' benches uh, both had 22 points last night. So neither team really got anything out of their bench. The, I know the Suns, two players combined for uh, all of their points, basically Cam Johnson and Campaign both had 10 points each, and nobody else really contributed off the bench for the uh, Suns. So bench play is going to be huge in this series for sure. Well, you're not necessarily, not necessarily going to get 30 and 40 points from your bench because they're just not playing those type of minutes. Yeah. You got to realize they're only playing, a lot of times the starters are playing 38. 40 minutes, 41 minutes. So you're not going to get the type of minutes from your bench for them to have, you know, 35, 40 points likely. But you just need somebody to be productive when they're in. And, and the Suns got that in Cameron Payne and Cameron Johnson. But it, it also, like we said, it just comes back to the starters pretty much. The bit, back, the backcourt that plays the best, like you said, it pretty, it's pretty much going to be successful in this series, in my opinion. And last night, the Suns won it in the landslide. For sure. And as I'm sitting here looking at the stat sheet from last night, uh, every starter played at least 30-plus minutes, except for Brooke Lopez. He only registered 23 minutes. So, like you said, all the starters are playing heavy minutes. So, they just Right, that's because to... they benched him in the four. Yeah, because, uh, you know, he started shoot, jacking up those threes. And, they, you know, because I was surprised they put crowd on him and uh, – I forget who they, who they had on Aiton, but I was surprised they went, you know, s small on both of those players. And I think that both of those players need to dominate if they're going to go small like that. Mark, we're going to have you lead off on this one. Who do you have winning the finals and how many games? Ooh, okay, how many games, part? Dang. 
that's that's tough. Um, well, you can just tell us who you got winning, and we can work on that later. <laughs> I, I got I got the Suns winning. I called the Suns going to the finals and winning the finals since they beat the Lakers. So I'm I'm gonna stick with them, and I really do believe that they will because CP3, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton, they have all those three of them have perfected that pick and roll game, and it's it's a thing of beauty when you can watch it run correctly and the team can't do nothing about it. Um, and I I'm gonna say it's gonna be in I want. Five or six. It's gonna be in five or six. What about you, Ruff? <laughs> I'm gonna hang in with the with the Suns, like you said, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give Milwaukee two games. I'm gonna say Suns is Suns and six. You know, a lot of prisoner of the moment type stuff has went on on TV and just on social media today. Uh Suns and four and <laughs> no Milwaukee's way. done and all this. Do I believe the Suns are going to win the series? Yes, but I'm going to hang in and I'm going to give the Milwaukee Bucks two games. I just believe when you have a guy like Giannis who is that great, uh, when you have guys who are very good in Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton, I think they'll be able to at least put together one game where all three of them play really well. And then I'm going to say that in another game, maybe two of the three play really well all the way through but they get some something from people that they didn't expect necessarily. You know, Brooke, uh, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Porters, maybe even uh, Forbes comes in and has a 10-point game off the bench. So I'm going to hang in with the Suns in six games. That's going to be my prediction. I, I agree with you. I, I had Suns in seven before this series started, but after last night, I'm going to take a game away from Milwaukee. Uh, because I just think the Suns, they're uh, locked in right now. Uh and they're playing some great ba- basketball right now. And uh, I think Milwaukee, I feel like they may could win game three and four in Milwaukee potentially because they play really well at home, seven and one. But they've really struggled on the road. They're five and five on the road. So I think it will be hard for Phoenix to win in Milwaukee. So I could see them potentially winning game three and four in Milwaukee or maybe one of those two and then maybe still in one in Phoenix. Uh, but I just think the Suns, uh, they're rolling right now, and I just think they're going to finish this off in six games. Yeah. Because, in the uh, I don't know what it is, but the Bucks they just seem like, you know, they play better at home. I, I don't know what it is, but it's sometimes they can't miss at home. I don't, I don't know what it is. They just seem to – the game seems to flourish at home for whatever reason, and sometimes on the road it just doesn't travel. But – that's why I think that it'll be in six games. Who do you guys have as your finals MVP? Uh, Lamar Chris Paul. Want... Okay, you got Chris Paul? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got I got the same person, man. I got Chris Paul, man. But I think it's not going to be based on points per game or assists per game for Chris Paul. I think he's going to separate himself because it's – even in game one, it was evident that he's the smartest player on the floor – He's going to control the tempo the entire time he's on the floor, and he's going to control the shot selections for his team the entire time he's on the floor. And he's also going to play a defense at an elite level. And I don't think we're going to be able to overlook that unless Devin Booker just go like 40-40-40. <laughs> yeah, I, I also have my fellow Ram, uh, Chris Paul, winning finals MVP. I just feel like uh, he's going to put this team on his back, and uh, he's just going to make sure they finish this off uh, – because I think this is going to be his best chance to get a ring. So he's not going to let this opportunity slip. I think he's going to keep this up. I don't know if he'll average 30 every game, but he'll be in the hot 20s every game, 10 plus assists, uh, no turnovers. And I think he'll definitely separate himself from the pack and show that he's the best player in this series for sure. I believe he had a high turn. Well, it wasn't high, but I want to say it was like maybe about four or five turnovers last night. I think he had that, That's something when I. Let me see. I don't know what it was. Because I know the yeah, first half, they did really good on turnovers. Yeah, two. They only had one night. in the first. Yeah, two last yeah. night. Okay, yeah. I mean, that is high for him. That's how good he is with the ball. Yeah, we it is two, high. We, yeah. say, we say, man, he was careless. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I, I, I normally don't be looking at the turnovers, but when they put it up there, they he didn't have no turnovers the whole game. I'm like, that's so hard, you know, because you can just be careless one play and you throw it to somebody and somebody jumped the passing lane. So that's just really hard to have those zero turnover games. So that's – Yeah, definitely. I put up a stat 
I put up a stat on the timeout sports phase this year. I think prior to the playoffs, he had had, I want to say, nine games with eight or more assists and zero turnovers. That's pretty point remarkable. God. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Point God. <laughs> Mind blowing. Yeah, point God. For sure. <laughs> What's one adjustment the Bucks should make for game two to maybe potentially tie, have the series tied up going to Milwaukee? Uh, Ruff, you want to start off here? Yeah, so for me, I think there's a few different things they have to do. Uh, one, Giannis, I think, will be more confident in himself and in his ability, uh, you know, with one game under his belt. I felt like he he looked pretty good, but it was like certain things he didn't necessarily want to try in game one because it's still like in the back of your mind, oh, man, I don't want to re-injure this thing. Uh, so I think he'll be more confident. He'll need to take his intensity up, especially on defense. I felt like his his uh, switching and his side to side movement on defense needs to be better in game two. Like we said, Drew Holiday has to come out. I want to see him come out in the first quarter of game two and be aggressive. And he should be looking to get three or four shots very quickly into the game. He's got to take up his defensive intensity. The whole team does. They have to play better defense. They have to make the Suns work harder for their shots. And then when you talk about coaching, me and LaMarcus had a discussion where we kind of disagreed on uh, what was happening with the switches. And for me, uh, some other people agree with me. I'm sure people agree with him as well, but some people agree with me that it's not even necessarily the S's and the O's of it. It's just, okay, if Tucker is guarding Chris Paul and Lopez is guarding, you know, Aiden or whichever big he's guarding, Tucker has to fight harder over those screens to stay with his guy. In game one, he was just willingly backing up and getting on to Aiden and then allowing uh, Lopez to be on Chris Paul or Devin Booker. That's a recipe for disaster because Brooke Lopez cannot stay in front of Devin Booker or Chris Paul. They're going to get an easy shot, and even if they don't get an easy shot for themselves, they're going to do like they did yeah. last night. I believe it was the third or the fourth quarter where uh, Brooke Lopez was starting to get exposed by Chris Paul again, and they they had to double. So when, then when they doubled, that left a shooter open. I, I can't think have it, them getting those quality shots. I, I think it was the third quarter because I think that's when Booker and Chris Paul just were just uh, killing them right. in that pick yes, and roll. Devin Booker, Devin Booker yeah. had the ball, I believe. He passed it to Chris Paul, open three. Yeah, so those are some of the adjustments that has to be made. Uh, they just, they got to come out with desperation tomorrow uh, in game two. Just got to be more desperate. I, I agree with you uh, about Giannis. As I look here, I can't believe he only took 11 shots, but maybe, like you said, he didn't trust some things last night. But uh, he's uh, definitely can't let uh, Chris Middleton out uh, – get more shots than him. So I hope he's more aggressive last night. And what I said was I feel like they should try to get Drew Holiday some easy looks, maybe run some plays for him, you know, to start the game. And if he's rolling, I think it's a great chance that they can tie the series up going to Milwaukee. And we already know how hard it is to win in Milwaukee. As I stated earlier, there's seven and one in Milwaukee in the postseason. So uh, I don't know if this is really a must win for them, but I definitely don't think you want to go down 0-2 to the Suns going back to Milwaukee. Uh, Lamar, how about you, bro? What's an adjustment they need to make? An, an adjustment I see them needing to make, and this is why like, I disagree with you two, at, is the health of Giannis. And what's really, like, bothering me about it is when he initially, you know, had the hyperextension in the knee, he was going, um, he was going north to south. You know, he was going downhill to the basket. And he's and it's having him trouble, like Ruff said, on defense, especially on offense, when he's going laterally. I noticed the game where he only took 11 shots, and then all his shot pretty much came from the free throw line in. He didn't get that running start with the Euro or the, um, the little where he throws the ball out, and he stutters one way and goes the other way. And those are some of you know, his patented moves, and he was still able to score, but I don't think he as effective in that role as he played last night and um as he is you know in his regular 
in his regular, you know, downhill role. But um, I think they just need to get him closer, closer to the basket. If he's going to play like that, he's going to need to get closer to the basket. So it's less of an effort on that knee and less stress on that knee to score. And I think that's going to make the defense shrink in and they'll, he'll be able to kick the ball out to, you know, the, the three-point shooters to get them some open looks. I agree with you when you said they need to get Drew Holiday easy looks at the basket because once Drew Holiday gets going, and we know Chris Middleton is gonna, he's gonna get his. We know Giannis is gonna find a way to get his. And that's that's a that's a tough team to stop. Um, they need to enforce their presence in the paint. I like Brooke Lopez, um, how he was scoring. You know, he had, I believe he had 17 points last night, and that that was really good for for them. They just need to establish that that paint presence, especially with uh Devin, not Devin Chenzo, but um Sarge out. No, sorry. Oh, oh, especially, oh, oh, oh. With, uh, so, oh okay. yeah, especially with Sarge out and Frank Kaminsky going to have to come in. I don't think, you know, he's going to be able to keep up with Giannis or be able to keep up with Brooke Lopez. And they got to figure out somehow to slow down that pick and roll, because at this point, the Suns might as well be at Burger King because they just have it whatever way they want. <laughs> Yeah, it's barbecue chicken every time they put uh Brooke Lopez in that pick and roll or one of their bigs. You know, it's they they finna get cooked. It's gonna be ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to you have to hope if you're a Bucks fan or a personnel that Giannis, like I said, it's just he's more comfortable starting game too. You know, you have to hope he's more comfortable and he feels a little bit healthier. You know, because like Lamar said, he wasn't very explosive. Uh, you know, going downhill. So they're just going. They're going to have to play a lot better, man, and they're going to have to play like we've all said with more intensity from the opening tip. Right. I just feel like Giannis was playing to his injury, and that, and you know, when you're a, when you're that kind of elite player, you can do that. We've seen um, who was we've seen Chris Paul do it when he had the shoulder injury. He played to the injury. He just played around. I mean, elite players can play around the injury, but when I don't see your patented moves coming out, it it worries me that you're you're not as healthy as everybody else believes you to be. And I wonder if he just, you know, wanted to play last night because he wasn't sure uh, if his team could beat the Suns without him. So maybe he just tried to tough it out at 80%, maybe just to be out there for his team, hoping to help out a little bit. I think they honestly could. The way they, the way uh, Brooke Lopez, Chris Middleton, and Drew Holiday play, I, that's a that was scary. Yeah, uh, because I was wondering if that's why, like I said earlier, uh, that's why Drew Holiday was struggling. Because you know, without Giannis in the lineup, you know, I gotta put this team on my back so they can, you know, be successful and be in the game. So maybe he lost a little bit of that last night with Giannis in the game. So I think they maybe could win a game or two off the Suns without Giannis, but. My last point on Giannis, there were certain times where they doubled him and they swarmed him in the paint, and he still tried to go up and finish. You got If you're Giannis in that situation, you got to trust your teammates and kick the ball out immediately because I saw him have a couple of turnovers in that situation where, okay, you get the ball in the post and two people swarm you. He's still trying to grow up, and he ends up losing the ball. Trust your teammates in that situation and pass it out. That's when you get your best opportunities for three when it's, a, you know, drive and kick, uh, you know, because we know that they're going to still continue to take 35 and 43. They refuse to be dominant in the paint. So at least work on getting more quality three-point looks. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I, I don't understand that. Like, you know, they dominated in the paint in game five against the Hawks, and then they come out in game six and start jacking up those threes again. I just – they frustrate me. I couldn't be a fan of the Bucks. They would drive me crazy. <laughs> So, Ruff, I'm going to let you lead off here. Uh, why don't you tell everybody where they can follow you and also get some of that merch you're rocking. <laughs> so, you can follow me um, over at Timeout Sports. That's my podcast. Uh, the Instagram page is Timeout Sports with two underscores. And the Twitter page is at Timeout Sports 3. Sports is all caps. Uh, again, Timeout Sports 3 on Twitter. And Timeout Sports with two underscores on Instagram. I've also recently started a WNBA page in which I, you know, highlight the fashion of the ladies, you know, pregame. So you can follow that page if you like at WNBA Fits uh, and WNBA League Fits. 
you'll see those. When you type it in, you'll see it um, on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Uh, the merch, the mm-hmm. merch is just a rough way. I mean, I hadn't even really mm-hmm. been selling this lately. I had this a long time ago. But uh, I do have timeout sports uh, shirts that can be pre-ordered or ordered. Uh, if you are interested, you can just contact me uh, via any of those social media platforms that I listed. Ruff, uh, who's that uh, player for the uh, Liberty Richards? Uh, she's fly yeah. every game, my Claire. She she don't I'm play. Yeah, she, every she's that. <laughs> yeah, every time. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Lamar, how about for you, bro? You just uh, started up something new that you and uh, Nishan are doing. So why don't you tell everybody about that? All oh, right. the sports, um, <laughs> yeah, the sports, you know, you added the sports production. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You confused me a little. <laughs> oh, my bad. All right, yeah. <laughs> so, you good, you good, you good. So, uh, just recently um, started JWall Sports as my own business. It's an LLC where, you know, we produce, you know, any kind of sports content. I'm producing highlights right now. You know, if anybody, you know, you need highlights of, you know, games, I'll come out there, shoot, shoot you some highlights. Um, you can hit me on Instagram or Twitter at uh, J Wall Sports on Twitter and at J Wall Sports Productions on um, on Instagram. Sure, for sure. I want to uh, thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, definitely enjoy talking basketball with you guys. Not yeah, most definitely. Appreciate you for having me. Uh, no problem.